Hey, dude. How's everybody doing out there? How are all the Welcome. dudes out there? How are all the dudes? All the young dudes. All the young, young dudes. <laughs> That's a throwback to our last episode, if you haven't listened to it. Um, I really loved in the last episode where you were like, all right, all right. <laughs> because i can't sing and it's terrible well, and, and it was like, just please like... edit it out and you did it <laughs> oh uh this is dude that's fucked up it is well, welcome i'm aaron i'm nicole <laughs> we're gonna chat some fucked up stuff today yeah dudes um well i just wanted to say off the bat um big thanks to some friends of mine that I saw at a wedding this past weekend. I went to my friend Shannon and Jake's wedding. Um, shout out to y'all. And congrats. Congratulations. Um, but she's she's a listener and she's great. Um, and then I saw my friend Jamie who was there at the wedding as well. And it was really nice to hear from her that she thought it was really cool that we just like talk really openly about our bodies and just like fucked up shit that happens to us um I don't know and I I I think in the second episode I know like this is something that you can kind of like listen to out of you you don't have to listen to it in order you don't have to listen to any episode that you don't want to listen to and so maybe a lot of people didn't listen to the second episode where we talk about parasitic worms (laughs) um which is fair because it's disgusting um but if you didn't I had talked about I had a, a major surgery and um you can just listen to the beginning of it if you want because that's where I talked about it um and I don't know I like had just shared this thing about my life that was like shitty and um hard and she was like I'm really glad you guys did that and it was really nice to hear women talk about you know pain and not feeling great and also things that are fucked up that happened to women and not through any you know not not really traumatic but just illness and things that people don't really feel comfortable talking about um and I feel very comfortable talking about all that because of the thing that happened and I will talk about it and not be embarrassed about it so if you, you can't feel, control it so no yeah and it's a thing that I just have no shame about and nobody should have any shame but if you do feel shame, know that you're not alone, and I'm here with you. Huh. I, on so. the other hand, am mortified that I told everyone I pooped in a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be. <laughs> no, no. I don't care. Uh, I care hey. for the first two seconds uh, after we released that, and then I was like, whatever. Um, oh, that's so nice. I Yeah. yeah. I feel like we've gotten some really nice emails, and just a reminder, if you email us and you – um, are okay with it with sharing just make that known we've gotten some emails where that wasn't necessarily um, specified up top yeah definitely let us know because we are over sharers ourselves and <laughs> <laughs> if you want to join in we can make that happen for you uh, yeah <laughs> totes oh god uh. such an overshare speaking of oversharing um I had a conversation last night so we have a friend that um is he's a forensic engineer which yeah I did had no idea what this was and he's pretty new in the job um like within the last year or so I think and um wait is this somebody I know too uh no okay yeah yeah. Or you're saying we as in M- Oh, Pete we and as you. in Pete and I, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we as in. Not like we as in me and you. <laughs> we as in my other ride or die. My number two. My number two. Not my number one. Um, <laughs> but uh, so we were out having drinks last night and um, celebrating my number two's birthday. And uh, we, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm like, happy fascin- birthday, Pete. Yay. Happy, happy birthday, Pete. Again, God, how long are we going to celebrate this? It was on Tuesday. Jesus. Uh, you um, get a birthday week. Calm down. <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> All right. It's, I'll, I'll allow it. Okay. Um, so basically a forensic engineer goes to not um, crime scenes. It could be, I guess, potentially. It's actually accident scenes. So it could be like a car accident or, you know, if someone's house flooded 
or um, anything kind of accidental, like even a like a. Um, is it like when insurance has to get involved? It's not like an yes. adjuster, but like yeah, a but step above that. Yeah, it's like not. Yeah, I think so. I don't know where it ranks in terms of the adjuster, but yeah, basically he, his company <coughs> is hired on by insurance companies, and they go, okay, um, this happened. We need you to go in and see what the what the deal with this was. And hmm. they'll go in and they'll, you know, like, take a look. They'll look at everything. Like, if it's in a house and something happened, like, there was a fire or something, they literally look top to bottom until they find, like, what the interesting thing was. Um, like, oh, okay, here, here's where we think this started from. And then they have to show, was this because of a human error or was this because this part, let's say, was manufactured and was janky? Uh, huh. Because then the to buck gets passed. To figure out what's at fault. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he like can get subpoenaed and he has to travel all over the U.S. and like go to these places where things are happening. And it was really That's exciting. Cool. Yeah. But he also has to look at like really gross stuff and like videos where he sees like the like people dying and like yikes just gross and he was getting into a lot of detail and I'm, I'm like into that stuff to a point <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then I think we were like talking and um he just like all of a sudden I think could see on my face that I was like oh, oh this is getting too <laughs> I don't want to hear about charred bodies and like the the skull was cracked open and the flesh was dripping off like gross Stop. Wait, we've literally talked about all those things in each one of our podcasts. Yeah, but it's the like The first removed. episode of our podcast, we talked about charred bodies. But it's like Wikipedia articles versus someone who's seen it. I, I don't know. know. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, God. And he was like probably going into really deep detail. Yeah, he loves it. I, I mean, I would love it too, I think, but it is freaky. Um, yeah. So yeah, forensic engineering. I'd be curious if anyone else knows someone I that wanted does that. To- yeah, I wanted to get into um, forensic anthropology mm. when I was in college. Like, that was my... Is that, like, like that mummies? Was, well, it's... No, I mean, it's, like, it could be anything from studying something that's, like, you know, pretty old to, like, figuring out, like, f- like forensics. Any Anything forensics is, like, more science-based and, like, looking at certain indicators and, I don't know, those... Oh. That was, like, what I, I would have gone – because there's so many different ways you can go with anthropology because it's, like, so broad. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not any broader than my major, English and textual studies. Oh, man. That's why we're so good at, at podcasting. <laughs> uh, uh, well, speaking of um, uh, forensics, maybe? No? Or speaking – Dead bodies? Uh, <laughs> Speaking of amassing a cult-like following to this podcast. Nice. Uh, This episode is about um, everybody's favorite 1990s cult, Heaven's Gate. (laughs) 1970s through 1990s. Yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, we were talking about doing the Jonestown uh, massacre. Jonestown. Oh, my gosh. Jesus Christ. We were like, I think we could take it a step closer to home for us. Something that we also remember as children, um, like it was big time in the news when we were kids. I don't know if you remember. Uh, Yeah, because I remember my mom had a People magazine like in their bathroom and it had the founder of the cult on the cover who is Uh. horrifying. He's so freaky. He's like a bald man and his eyes are huge. He has Uh, these piercing blue eyes that are just like terrifying. And he has a lot of like... Like, he has, like, a deep nasolabial fold uh, uh-huh. and, and like, deep – he has, like, really deep lines on his face, and he looks like a caricature of – A cult leader. But you just look <laughs> at him and, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, he looks the part, so he got he it. He looks like he's drawn onto <laughs> the screen, and he's a real person. Um, he almost looks yeah. like a dummy. No, yeah, he's, like, a he's like a ventriloquist dummy. Yeah. Um, well, this hap- This is pretty relevant because this happened 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, well, as of March yeah. um, of this year. So 1997 is, like, when the, like, denouement of this, like, cult <laughs> <laughs> happened. But leading up to that, we have two founders of Heaven's Gate, which started out as um, Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles. So... 
they met let's see they met in like the 70s early 70s they both were just a mess a mess (laughs) a total fucking mess just messes and it's sad because I feel like it was like such a generation of people where they just didn't deal with anything like that's gonna be a theme um I think for people that really got into anything culty anything during this time that they just needed to glom onto, I think. Um, it felt like the 70s were like a time of lost souls or something. Where definitely. Where they were just like wandering and looking for, like coming out of like the hippie movement and feeling maybe a connection to like your brothers and sisters and all that stuff. And then, you know, that didn't, that started to kind of dissipate and people, the people that were really into that or who had like the personalities that needed that connection like were then kind of stuck you know looking for other groups to join definitely like a lot of like perfect storms of things of ideologies happening um in the 70s you have the like scientology started in the 70s um lots of cults were forming um harry krishna oh yeah harry krishna didn't the beatles get into harry krishna yes because they have that song george oh yeah What's My that? sweet Lord, hallelujah. Yeah. And then it, they say song. Harry Krishna in it. Yeah. Hare Krishna. <laughs> it's a really good song until you like listen you to You wouldn't know it from what we just did. Yeah. But it's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we've sung in every single episode <laughs> for like the past five episodes. And I'm so sorry. Um, It's fine. Also... I feel like um, I was thinking about this because we're going to get into it, but this is like a fucking weird cult where it took like sci-fi and uh, what is not regarded as sci-fi, but is regarded as uh, the teachings of Christianity and combined them. And bad combo. It's a bad, bad combo. combo. But it made me think about like going to Jesus camp and when, and when we um, mm-hmm. recorded the episode, we couldn't post because it was all fucked up. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we were singing all the songs from church camp. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I lift your name on high. <laughs> Lord, Lord, I, I love to sing your praises. praises. <laughs> there we go. We got it in. <laughs> So I said a pharaoh, pharaoh. Oh no, let my <laughs> people go. Way. You don't know that yeah, one. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and now I'm Jewish, so. <laughs> okay. Well, well, it all worked this. out in the end. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah. So these two back people, to, these yeah, two getting lost back souls. to Marshall, and he 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 has a hard time. He's okay. Tell me how you would deal with your life if your middle name was Herf. <laughs> um, it sounds like you're coughing up a hairball. <laughs> I have a table for two for Herf. <laughs> it's like the sound that somebody makes while they're puking. <laughs> Oh God! Oh I'm God! I'm sorry. I would start a cult. If that was what are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? Why would somebody do that to their kid? Where does that come from? I want to know the origins of that middle name. It's a family name, obviously. <laughs> Her <laughs> Junior. <laughs> oh my God! I'm crying so much. Go sit on your grandpa. Herf's lap. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh god. Okay, I can't get my shit together. I'm gonna be mortified if we have a friend or a listener with the name Murph. It's like, it's like Murphy, like short for Murphy, but. Like, do you think, do you think it's short for her feet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm crying so much right now. Oh, God. The show Herfy <sighs> Brown would have been so different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <sighs> well, obviously, he had a mental... I mean, <laughs> he was the founder. <laughs> he was the founder of a cult, but obviously, he had uh, m- mental issues, probably from that middle name, because he met Bonnie Nettles in a psych ward when she was a nurse, and he was staying there for some reason. I don't know what... <laughs> Uh, well, he he had a he had a bunch of shit happen to him that was actually really sad. Marshall, Aww. he was he was he was married, and then he was like he was closeted gay man, mm. a closeted gay man, and it's so sad because he just couldn't live his truth yeah. because he was like very religious. Like, like, how do you reconcile what you feel and what your true self is when it's like completely taboo according to your religious beliefs so he had a hard time he actually um i think he like had a couple relationships with men but he and might have lived like openly gay for a short time but then um his father died and that really fucked him up and so he just i think he had like a complete mental breakdown he had some like really i think he just had some like undiagnosed mental um mental illness just like a lot of stuff just kind of happened to him at once and as it goes with some of these people who just get on a really bad track, um, he ended up being institutionalized, and that's how he met Bonnie, uh, his his partner in crime, basically. Uh, yeah, so Bonnie and he, Bonnie was going through some shit too. She was her her marriage was falling apart because she also probably had some undiagnosed mental health issues. She believed she was receiving messages from a 19th century monk named Brother Fan- Francis. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot. Um, that's not a thing that's normal. Um, and maybe she needed some help too, but never got it. And they kind of like found each other while he was at this institution and they became friends, bonded over the fact that both their marriages are failing, blah, blah, blah. Um, they both like wished they kind of just lived or existed in another place other than their current world, which yeah. is kind of the foundation for all the shit that they start doing. Well, and it's sad because like they, yeah, they like saw something in each other that they really liked. And um, Bonnie Nettles had a family mm-hmm. and she abandoned them and went on, I think for like a year, They, her and... Um, Applewhite went and were just, like, not living off the land, but just, like, being culty, just the two of them. Uh, And they kind of, like, found themselves and found what would eventually be the basis for their cult. Or found it or, like, dictated it or aligned on it or whatever you want to say. Fabricated it. (laughs) Um, and Just wove it all together. Yeah, Yeah. just, like, wove it all together, really worked it out. And then, um, yeah, like, they were just, like, out there living their new truth and like she just abandoned her kids it's so sad yeah and she was always into like um like astronomy Mm -hmm. and was really into space and just aliens I guess uh and just kind of had this like kind of like weird quirky personality and and which if you were able to live your truth, you could probably find, like, in today's society, you could find an outlet for. But in the 70s and and in this time, it was just different, and you you were just considered a fucking weirdo and yeah. an outcast. And I think that's where her and uh, Marshall just really bonded. So anyway, they kind of, like, cultivated this idea that the Earth um, – is there the current state that we're living in is just like not the final thing and there's a higher higher plane and and a a better place to be and the human body is just like trash (laughs) (laughs) um so they believed in aliens and ufos they believe that aliens kind of like i just like don't want to talk about aliens i think it's so fucking stupid like i obviously like believe in aliens but like (laughs) Not in this way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, there's no line. It all sounds crazy. But, uh, yeah, I think the, the idea was that aliens came down and, like, inhabited their human forms, right? That They were, like, 
they were like yeah. not, not possessed by an alien. They were but... wearing an Egger suit. <laughs> But, like, more elegantly than than that from Men in Black. <laughs> Egger, your skin's hanging off your bones. <laughs> anywho. Uh, anywho. I mean, that sounds... <laughs> Men in Black is basically what they believed. Yeah, they believed that, like, we, like, humans were, like I said, trash. And there was just, like, a higher plane of existence. Some humans and, are trash. I mean, that's true. <laughs> that is true. I believe the... The trash humans, though, are the ones that are inhabited by aliens. <laughs> like, you think you're talking to a normal person, and then nope, or they're not. It's either aliens or meth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, they so they start to refer to each other as Bo and Peep, and then later as Doe and T. They like they do this whole thing. It's just so fucking lame and guinea nerdy and, and pig. It's like yeah, things ugh. that go together. Yeah. Um. They so Marshall was ultimately referred to as Doe, and Bonnie was referred to as T, which is kind of cute. <laughs> um, and they're they're they eventually kind of like settled on this kind of philosophy that uh, it was called him, uh, which stood for human individual metamorphosis. Um, attracted lots of like ex hippies, new agey people, um, everybody like that was recruited into this kind of like hippie, new agey kind of alien UFO with Bible influence was like it, it really made sense to a lot of people. Um, well, and the Bibliness too was like underscored by the fact that they believed Jesus was reincarnated as a Texan. Uh, which was Who, an, uh, which alludes to Marshall Marshall Applewhite, aka Bo, aka Doe, aka Guinea, aka Herf. Can we call him Herf the rest of the podcast? Yeah, let's call him Herf. Okay, perfect. All right, guys. From here on out, we're referring to Marshall Applewhite as Herf. <laughs> okay, it'll just be Herf. Like like normal call, Herf. Yeah, like normal Herf. <laughs> normal Herf. <laughs> I'm sorry. A name. Oh, man. <laughs> uh. I'm losing my shit. No, no, no. It's it's great. Um, mm. So, yeah, they did, like, the typical culty thing where they just, like, recruit people. And there, there's something that about it that speaks to the these people who are kind of lost uh, and have the desire to get back to something organized and regimented, um, mm. which is why I think cults flourished so much during this time. Yeah, people loved it. Like, there was um, a former member, Leanne Wolf, and, like, a lot of the documentaries that we watch, I found I found them on YouTube. I don't know where you watch them. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but they were, like, they were kind of, like, floating from cult to cult or, like, movement to movement. Right. So they already had this kind of personality. But uh, a former member, Leanne Wolf, said, like, we, we were not there to be brainwashed. Like, we were begging to be brainwashed. Like, mm. we knew that this was a cult. We wanted all of this. We wanted all of the structure that it brought and, <clears throat> you know, the kind of ha- t- them telling us how to live our lives and dictating everything we did. Like, everything, every detail of their daily lives was prescripted. Also, <clears throat> I feel like this is probably what made most of them crazy. They were huge proponents of the master cleanse. Oh, my God. Which is, like, like the like, the, the – the what, what is it like maple syrup yeah lemon uh, juice cayenne pepper lemon juice water yeah it i think it, it just like that's all you you just drink this for like you like fast and drink this and it just like makes you shit and they like of course there's always an enema involved <laughs> <laughs> if, they did like a lot of enemas and oh god yeah. Yeah, but, like... Master clones. Oh, my God. I, like, no wonder people were crazy, and this man, Herf, was so crazy. Like, uh, you're not eating food. Mm -mm. (laughs) You're starving. You're going to be hangry. (laughs) 
so Bonnie and Marshall, aka T and Herf, um, <laughs> start to just they they're they're pushing this like agenda of like aliens and like evolving to a higher plane and everybody's like fuck yeah i don't want to be on this planet like this this speaks to me and they started like restricting a lot of stuff like human emotions discouraged sex and uh like we're doing these cleanses all the time um because they had to be pure and ready for the aliens to uh come pick them up the and other aliens the other aliens yeah um they in the beginning had gained a bunch of followers from a UFO meetup in Oregon. Um, and again, like this is a lot of what they're saying is like piggybacking on Christian Judeo Christian beliefs and like biblical references. Mm -hmm. So it's familiar to people enough, but also they're inserting these like modern <laughs> kind of, um, references like with spaceships and and aliens and stuff and people are like oh okay yeah that makes sense like why wh how why wouldn't it why doesn't it make sense that god is an alien or jesus is an alien like <laughs> they just they it if it if it's if it's just this divine being why couldn't it possibly be an alien it makes sense to me sure it's not absurd. Like, yeah, I think if you're a pretty rational person and like question things um, and not to say that like it's religion is is that for everybody. But because for a lot of people, it's just kind of like a, a framework within to live your life yeah. in a way that is productive and, you know, moralistic for you. But. For these people, it was like a lot of the stuff that they believed in. They were taking like the Bible kind of literally, and and when alien shit is introduced, it's like, why not? Yeah, let's sure. Anyway, so in 1985, uh, Bonnie actually dies of cancer, and this is like devastating to Marshall. I think like mm -hmm. this is he's had all these like personal traumas kind of heaped on and he's they're in the midst of like uh, they have like I think hundreds of followers at this point mm -hmm. um and she dies of cancer which was completely untreated and um she didn't have any she didn't, like never went to the doctor but it was determined she died of cancer in 1985 well it was brain he, cancer too that's hard to I, w yeah. I would imagine at that time like they weren't as advanced it's it'd probably be hard to figure out that's what that was sure even if even if they she would have gone for any kind of treatment i think it was like probably so advanced that yeah like i think she had gone blind in the end and when i i don't know yeah um anyway it was it was really sad and um when she passed away um she was kind of disconnected from her her daughter who i think was the closest with her um but they hadn't really been in contact in a while. And Marshall didn't even reach out to the daughter or any of her other family to let them know that she died. Um, I think, I don't know how her daughter eventually found out, but when she did, it was like a while after she'd passed. I think he told, so, he ended up telling her like a few months later. Like, right. Yeah. So, but I, I would imagine that he was, yeah, he was like grappling with the passing of his friend and like, you know, confidant and comrade or whatever. Yeah. Um, but also like it didn't really jive up with their, what they're, what preaching. they believed. Right. Yeah. Like it was, it, 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 the, they were supposed to take their bodies with them. Yeah. And the, and what they were selling to the people that were in the, in the cult. And, um, I don't know that it was even called heaven's gate at this point. Um, but within the narrative of their, of their, what they're telling their believers, their followers, was that your body would also ascend to this higher plane. Yeah. And that didn't happen. Like, she just died because <laughs> that's what happens when you are a human. Because <laughs> they weren't aliens. They weren't – they're not these, like, you know, blessed beings. They're, they're just human beings. And she died. And that didn't fit into the narrative of what they'd been telling their followers. So he kind of had to switch it up. And this, this is what always happens in cults. Like – they, yeah. They're constantly 
evolving and piling on lies on lies on top of lies so he had to change the narrative up uh as all good cult leaders do and say that she had ascended to a higher plane but she left her human body behind and she'd collect in a better hotter body (laughs) (laughs) uh, she'd collect a beach bod Uh. yeah (laughs) and she'd come back and she'd grab the others and then they hop on their spaceship or whatever yeah well which will play into kind of the ending of this yeah. story but um also he said he could still communicate with her so he was like oh yeah no she's still like communicating with me she's made it like she has her she's angelic body dead, dead. yeah she's yeah just, like dead ish um <laughs> mm-hmm. but i can still talk to her and um what do you mean i'm not blinking i'm fine uh <laughs> oh um and yeah it was just kind of sad the oh, something something else that like uh makes me sad about this too or something else that's like a contradictory thing to me where it's like if I was in this cult I'd be like wait a second like mm. because they were told that they were aliens inhabiting human bodies and then they were told to like rep- repress all of this sexual stuff um And then a lot of the people in the documentaries reported, like, no, they would still have, like, these sexual urges because they're humans Mm -hmm. and not aliens. Mm -hmm. Um, But something that was really successful, as is with uh, a lot of, like, Judeo-Christian religions, is, like, telling those people to repress their sexual urges. And they Mm -hmm. would, like, shame them for it. They'd have to stand up and report in front of the group, like, their slippages Mm -hmm. in humanity. So, like, you're an alien. What are you doing lusting after this woman that you met or whatever and it would like shame them shame is the ultimate uh form of of control for people if you if you feel shame and this is why just don't feel shame just yeah let it all hang out Mm -hmm. live your live your truth don't hurt anybody but i mean don't feel shame unless your middle name's herf (laughs) (laughs) and then just change it you know (laughs) and then don't feel shame (laughs) yeah so yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of shame, a lot of uh, regiment, and then um, like the the getting restricting everybody's free will, uh, where they're like not letting people see their family members. Is that like a personality thing? Because I've never met anyone where I would just be like, I would just blindly listen to everything they said and like follow them. I've never felt that connected Me to neither. a human. You do yeah, it's weird. I wonder if it's like a personality thing to some degree or something where you're right. like, yeah, cuz where you're just like, yes, okay, I won't talk to yes, I'm an alien in a human body. No, I won't talk to my family. Like Yeah, and I think I think having like a father and mother figure where they're just so intensely focused on you um and what you're doing in a way that's like shaping you in a way like that some of these people's parents probably just like could care less or like they didn't know how to talk to them yeah I don't know and they didn't have like their parents didn't have this like authority kind of I have no idea I don't know all I know is that like for me I my parents always taught me to question authority um like have a curiosity respect authority but to also just be like you don't like people in authority are also human beings they're not and I think that's that's a thing of like this unquestioning kind of mentality comes in so I don't know yeah I don't know same I I also wasn't raised with any religion so yeah that could be a thing same. too I, I don't know I, I, I am someone who follows rules but I question them yeah and if they aren't if they don't, like, jive up, then I'm like, okay, wait. I question things that are inefficient. <laughs> yeah, same. Or just, like, don't make sense. Like, I I think rules serve a purpose, and I think, but I think through them. I don't just, like, blindly mm-hmm. follow them. But mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, a lot of these people don't, didn't have that um It's just reasoning. like, the, it's like, yeah, it's just like that thing of the, of a perfect storm where yeah. just a lot of personality traits, the time the uncertainty, the, you know, maybe mental mental health issues, just, like, all kind of, like, play into this thing. Yeah. Um, also, aliens are exciting to people. <laughs> <laughs> Not this person. Nope. Um, <laughs> well, and uh, things were going good, but I think, yeah, he, like you said, he was starting to restrict everyone's free will, and things were getting real culty. Yeah. 
So he just becomes the ultimate leader of the cult. And um, people are starting to get restless because when you want to have sex, like that's like a big like human sexuality is a very powerful thing <laughs> and it it drives a lot of emotion. And so I mean, it fueled like, the starship. It fueled the starship. Yeah. <laughs> I just read this thing on, this morning about sex magic and like how you can like cast spells with your orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Think about it. Energy man. Oh. <laughs> anyway. So he, people are starting to get restless and he just was like, I think people were like, let's just castrate ourselves. <laughs> He was like the like, dudes. Yeah. Well, Apple White was like, I'm going to castrate myself and you all have to. Yeah. So that castration means where you cut your balls off. Yeah. I know. Pete was like, what? Who would cut their dick off? I was like, no, they don't <laughs> cut your dick off. It's just your peep, your, your peepee's intact. Your balls are not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What I wouldn't give for no balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they um, went out, I think, somewhere where they just, like... They went to nine, Mexico nine, City. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. They're like, we need a we need a ball cutter offer. Oh, God. <laughs> and they got, they got somebody to cut their balls off. Like, nine of these people got their, like, these men. What happens when you lose a ball? Like, do they remove the Nothing. skin, too? Or do they just take no. the sack out and then you have two, like, hangy, like, no, no. thin, like, like, deflated balloons of balls? Yeah, no, it's just, like, there's just one ball in there, and the scrotum is, like, still, it's just, like, an empty bag. Oh. Is it, so it's just, like, a... I've never a, seen it. I just fleshy, know. like, yeah. <laughs> stretchy... It's, like, a loose, uh, empty coin purse. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a hairnet it's like a hair, hairnet with no head in it <laughs> and yeah anyway it's like a it's like a a wad of gum <laughs> oh remember our friends used to do that oh yeah <laughs> i sat in gum and i'm and all was like, that a nuts <laughs> why is there hair in it <laughs> Why is there hair in the gum you just sat in? Ugh. And then I'm all, ew, that's a nut sack. I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't, I, I, that was before I was like sexual or anything too. And I was like, ew. God damn it. Is that the first, that's the first time I'm seeing balls. The first time I saw a uncircumcised penis was in high school. Like in. Just out and about? The, in the halls. <laughs> really? Yeah. Whose yeah. was it? Uh-huh. I'm not telling. Well, we can edit it out. I'll tell you. Oh, okay. I'll tell you after. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, wasn't like in a sexual situation because dudes are just gross. They're just like pulling their balls and dicks out. I know. And being fucking gross and weird. It's gross. Anyway, well, that was in the, like the late 90s, early 2000s. So yeah. Things have changed. Uh, yeah. They pull them out even more now. Yeah. Um, they, text anyway. you a, they text you a picture of it. You don't just see it fucking in the hallway. Hell. One time my friend showed me a, a Tinder picture, like somebody sent her, because I never have online dated in my life, yeah. and I'm glad I missed that whole situation. But she, like, one of my friends is like, look at this picture this guy sent to me. He, like, had lined his dick up perfectly with his face, so, like, and he had, like, kind of long hair, so it looked like the dick had hair. <laughs> Wait, like you couldn't see his face? You just yeah, saw the outline like the of the head, dick over like he, his face. Yeah, he like took the picture like from down like yeah. below. Yeah. And like the dick, he had like a dickhead. Oh my God, I want to see that. <laughs> I know. I'll tell my friend to send it to me. Yeah. It's so funny. Okay, good. Um, anyway, enough about dick pics. <laughs> um, we'll probably edit all that out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so people cut their balls off, um, and then some people are like, nope, this is not good. I don't want to cut my balls off. This has gone too far. I don't give a fuck what the next planet is like. I like my balls, and I'm living now. So they, like, a bunch of people end up leaving in the 90s, and um, then it kind of ramps up a little bit more, and they the internet starts happening. Mm-hmm. And it's another way for them to, like, get their message out. 
uh, I think they start doing like web design yeah. to make money. Because I was like, how did they afford anything? Like, how did they live their lives? Like, it's so weird. A lot of them sold blood. Oh, was yeah, that's right. one that's thing right. that they like got money, but that was early on. Once they got enough people, they found people who were like trust fund kids or whatever, or people, and so they um, would get funded through that. But then once the internet kind of happened, they were um, they des- they created a company called a higher source, and they would design websites, uh, yeah. and they would make like four hundred k a year. This is like when nobody knew how to use the internet. Yeah, like they they, they God. If they would have just, like, decided they wanted to just, like, run a startup, <laughs> they could have just, like, made money and, like... <laughs> yeah, they could have, yeah. They, probably. They'd probably be, like, billionaires they, now. They could have invented fucking Facebook. <laughs> they got in... They get on, They really got in early on the internet and were, like, designing websites and, like, making money, so... P.S. They have a website if you Google yes. Heaven's Gate, but I think it's just heavensgate.com and you should totally yeah. check it out because it is crazy old and uh it's like a it's like the nineties. It's like a it's like a time capsule. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Um yeah. also very creepy. I started reading it and I was like, no, I don't want to get brainwashed and I stopped reading it. Oh, I'll read I'll read it out loud. Oh. So just like the little blip about um so yeah, they get into the internet and they also are like really into um, like astronomical, is that the right word? Astronomical phenomenon? Yeah. They start uh, s- putting stuff on their website about um, all the all the like celestial phenomenon. And so around the early 90s, mid 90s I should say, we see this um, comet come into our orbit. It's called Hale-Bopp. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the age range of our listeners are, but this was, like, I remember this, like, very vividly. Yeah. Hale Bop was a big deal. Mm-hmm. My mom was, like, into astronomy. She wasn't, like, into it like Bonnie was, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> she was, like, she was, like, going back to school and, like, taking, um, like, classes and, and stuff. And she was just, like, in, we'd go to, like, star parties a bunch. And so we were, and my whole family is, like, really into astronomy and have telescopes and stuff so we were all into hail bop and so we'd go and look look at it every night because it was so fucking cool it was this huge comet just kind of stationary in the sky but like i don't know streaking across the sky at the same time there's like a a tail it's really cool Mm. um i remember it really vividly anyway they start putting these warnings up on their website and I'll just read really quickly oh good what yeah. their little what's currently on their website because now, I couldn't read says. it I couldn't read it yeah it says red alert in like a giphy kind of uh, comic sans all caps <laughs> and it's all, like a star black stars background really 90s um says hail hail bop brings closure to heaven's gate mm-hmm. as was promised the keys to heaven's gate are here again and T and Doe, the UFO 2, as they were in Jesus and his father 2,000 years ago. Whether Hale Bop has a companion or not is irrelevant from our perspective. However, its arrival is joyously very significant to us at Heaven's Gate. The joy is that our older member in the evolutionary level above human, quote, or I mean in parentheses, the kingdom of heaven, has made it clear to us that Hale Bop's approach is the marker we've been waiting for, the time for the arrival of the spacecraft from the level above human to take us home to quote their world in the literal heavens and i'm not gonna read the rest because it's just a bunch of fucking crazy oh, shit i gotta admit that was hard to it's it was hard to read it's hard to get through it's like uh fucking crazy 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 blah 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 crazy jesus reference <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so weird they but what they basically believe was that the, with the arrival of hail bop there was a spacecraft that was behind, hidden behind the comet or like in the tail of the comet or some bullshit. And that was their ride. That was T. Oh, she yeah. Was up T there, was like, like fucking space cowboy in it. She's like, get in. She's like, get in, losers. Let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your new celestial bodies. Let's go. Uh, check out my heavenly body. You too can lo- lose 60 pounds. <laughs> With the master cleanse. <laughs> oh, my God. Master cleanse. Yeah, so they 
Oh my god. Decide. She had fucking brain cancer. No wonder. <laughs> Everything No was one's wrong. put that together. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Also, by the way, they're in California. I mean Yeah. <laughs> this really gives California a bad name. Master cleanse. New body. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Hail Bob. <laughs> uh it's all crystals. Like it's all the it's bad all, things. Crystals are really big right all, now. I love crystals. I, I fucking have a crystal that I keep with me at all times. Oh. It's um it's like the goddess stone. I got it in um Sedona, so it's fully charged. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sedona. Sedona has vortexes, guys, or vortices, if you will. Oh. If you ever go, it's a very cool experience. I don't I, what does vortex do? It's like energy, it's just like pure energy and if you get certain like there's all these crystal shops there and if you like buy crystals you can like go to the vortex oh, of your choice. That's cool. Charge your crystal. Hmm. Very spiritual, very cool. When do you have to but, recharge yours? Uh probably like soon. I don't know, I'll go back, recharge my crystal. <laughs> <laughs> these people give a bad name to all the things. To new agey bullshit. <laughs> to new agey bullshit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's them, for sure. It's their fault. It's their <laughs> fault. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Um, let's keep it moving. Yeah, let's just get to the end, because that's the fun part. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Um, Fun's a relative term. Yeah. Um, fun, the band. Not fun. Oh, no, it's not fun. <laughs> uh, and we're just going to cut out this whole episode. <laughs> We'll cut out so much. It's fine. <laughs> um, so let's get to the meat of, let's get to the the denouement, if you will. <laughs> the penultimate decision by Marshall Applewhite to hop on board the spaceship that's trailing behind <laughs> Hale Bop. And it's so fucked because there's all these uh, exit interviews, if you will, like these videos yeah. of all of all the in, all the people who are in. Heaven's Gate. They're on the like, website, right? Or no? Uh, I think there's links to them. I oh, okay. I just saw like bits and pieces of, of them in all the like documentaries Same. I watched. Yeah. And it's just like these people are just so fucking gone. Sad. They're just gone. Yeah. They're just, they're like stoked. They're like, yeah, I'm going to go on to the next level. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving and I'm excited. I can't wait. Like, and what they're saying is they're going to commit suicide to get to the ship. That's the that's the final like journey of that they're talking about taking. Yeah. And they're talking about it in terms of like going on a trip and getting on the website it's like you're you get your boarding pass to hop on the the spaceship. I don't it's so <sighs> it's just so much. Um and they on the so the, the message is it's like your last chance to evacuate Earth before it's recycled by the aliens. I don't know. Yeah. We're still here, guys. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, it, it's been 20 years. Um, we're still here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they are saying in their exit interviews, like, we're leaving and we're hopping on the And they're all ship. excited. Yeah, there's, like, literally one person – only one person who cries a little bit about leaving her. Oh, my God. That's so sad. Yeah. Her life behind it's really sad. Um, oh, why would you do that? It's so dumb. Also, like, in one of the documentaries I watched, it was like, I almost started crying. It was so sad. It was like this this uh, this guy and his wife, and they, like, had kids and everything. And um, he they both joined right before this, like, the hail like while this was like in the in the final frenzy when hail bop came and they were like oh my god yes like we're so on board they like left their kids behind they like were they like left their kids with family and um they like joined the cult like six months before they all killed themselves and um the the husband kind of like was like fuck this like this is not right but the wife was like no this is this is the way that I'm gonna stay and he left and didn't know like he knew what was gonna happen but didn't know that they would go through with it and he's like well I'm gonna go back to like our regular life and like he 
didn't kill himself and she did. Hmm. It's did so he? It was really sad. Did he like get their kids back and stuff? I think so. Yeah. Oh, He's like, good. we have kids. Like he kind of just like came to his senses. It was so weird. Like just watching this little bit of, of his experience, I was just like, Jesus Christ. So I don't know. I think there's a total, I don't know what the total number of Heaven's Gate followers was at this point, but um, on March 26, 1997, the bodies of 39 members of Heaven's Gate were discovered in a mansion in a mansion in Rancho Santa Fe, California. In a mansion? In a mansion. <laughs> um, it's 21 women and 18 men. Uh, it's just, I think, Southern California, I think, right? Yeah, Rancho yeah, Santa yeah. Fe. It's, it's like San it's Diego. Like, yeah, San Diego. Yeah. Um, and it was because somebody that was a member who was left behind. So there was still followers that were like kind of outside of this like main like group fringe that followers killed themselves. Yeah, and so he kind of knew based on like what was on the website, what was happening. Like mm. he made a nine one one call. And he was like, yeah, I just want to report an anonymous tip that there's a bunch of people that just had there was a mass suicide. And the like and the police were like, uh, OK. And they kind of like didn't really. Br- they, ki- they didn't brush it off. Like, I think they like followed up on it, but they weren't like urgent about it because they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and it was just I remember seeing this as a kid the video um like on inside edition or whatever yeah yeah bullshit um of just these people like these bodies they're covered and you just see the feet you just see they're they all are wearing nikes yeah they're all wearing like black nikes with a white swoosh swoosh Mm -hmm. and they're wearing all black but you only see their pants because mm-hmm. their um, hands are like, like over them, and then they're covered with a purple triangle blanket. Yeah, at the top. And they, yeah, and they're all wearing um, in their exit videos. Like it's like right before they commit suicide, they are all wearing black pants and like a tunic, black top with a patch on it that says, um, <laughs> "It's so fucked up." <laughs> Heaven's Gate away team. <laughs> away team (laughs) like I don't want to laugh at it but it's so fucking weird all of this right now I'm just like thinking like all of this is crazy like why would like why wouldn't the UFO fucking come down to you and pick you up like why do you think killing yourself and then being dead is gonna get you to the UFO it's just so weird to me that people would believe something like that I don't know I know it's very judgy also but it, it, yeah, but you know what? It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so they – so the police find them. There's all these pictures. There's all this video of it. You could see it on the internet if you really want to. Um, it's pretty fucked. But the way they killed themselves is a, a mix of uh, phenobarbital and hydrocodone mixed in, like, applesauce or, or pudding, <laughs> and they washed it down with vodka. So – But then – I mean – But then they put a bag yeah. on their head. Also. And they put a bag on their head, so like, it's to like, suffocate also. Yeah, just, like, fucking really making sure it gets done. Yeah. Uh, and they did it in, like, waves of, of people. So, like, I think the first groups of people that started were, like, because they had – there was people that were, like, left behind that helped, like, kind of cover them up properly and, like, make sure everything was in order. Um, and it, I think the suicide started on March 22nd. Yeah. And they were all found on March 26th. So – uh, of course, Marshall Applewhite was one of the last ones to die, and two women had stayed behind to, like, help him, and then they killed themselves. And so all these, like, pictures that you see or a video that you see are just, like, they're all – I think the most heartbreaking image for me is there's um, a man – I think it's a man on a bottom bunk with uh, his glasses. Mm. You can see, like, they're perfectly – they're neatly next to him. And, like, the little, like, um, like croquis or whatever are, like, wrapped up perfectly. Yeah. So neatly and nicely. And that's just, like, I don't know. Like, all this stuff is heavy and sad, even though it's really crazy and bizarre. But, like, I don't know. It, it It's pretty shitty. 
And I think seeing it as a kid, it's like kind of burned in my memory, but I'm also like kind of desensitized to it. But like knowing how and why and like seeing the exit interviews of these people, they're just like normal people who kind of got turned around and messed up and had shitty things happen. And it's just like, this is not the way to go. Well, a lot of the family members say, like the family of the people who were part of this like exit, um, Mm -hmm. say it was one suicide and 38 murders right that's that one woman's family yeah who um, yeah who was like i for, i think her name was gail um mm-hmm. and she was young like she was she but she looked really old and they all shaved their heads before they died and everybody you yeah. know the women didn't wear makeup because they were genderless and like all this stuff and it's so sad and the parents were like really begging her to come home and there's a voicemail you could listen to and yeah all of this is sad but I I don't know I feel like it it is a little desensitizing because it was on the news here in California Mm -hmm. a lot and also um and it's like police footage of them like walking through the building um it doesn't look scary like I just remember it looks it it looks like peaceful it looks like they're sleeping but like under that purple blanket it's probably not Mm. It's not. It's really no. horrifying. And some people were dead in there for a few days, and it was like... Yeah, the um, the guy that made the 911 call, he was one of the followers. I think his name was, like, Rio something. Mm. Rio oh, de Janeiro. Yeah. <laughs> no, he had, like, a really weird name. It was, like, Rio well, he Giovanni changed it. or something. Yeah. He he was the one that made the 911 call, and he, he went to the house to like verify that they were dead like before he made the 911 call because he like had a he knew that this was probably going to happen um and he went there and he took he took video and his video is like there's no it's just like him in the house videotaping each person it it's it's way creepier than the police footage i think yeah but it's also like calm he's very calm um it's weird, but he's, like, gagging, I think. Like, he's trying not to gag, I should say. Because oh, like, it smells so bad. Yeah, all these people have been dead in this house for, like, 39 days. people. Yeah. And he also was, like, checking them to see if anybody was alive, which is fucked up. Yeah. Um, and it was – so this is the largest mass suicide of Americans um, since Jonestown. Yeah. Uh, and Jonestown is – the the ultimate cult like that one ended though for me like in in a in a way that was like really upsetting because i think people were trying not to participate in the end well people had their children there yeah babies were killed and babies yeah. yeah Yeah. But anyway, uh, so Jonestown, that was like 920 people. Yeah, that like, one's that's super fucking fucked insane. Up, yeah. That's almost a thousand people that are wiped out because of literally drinking. Yeah. Not Kool Aid, but whatever the the drink was. Yeah. Um, but that's where that expression comes from. <laughs> anyway, it, it's the largest uh, mass suicide since Jonestown um, in 1,000% still to this day is the largest mass suicide on on American soil because Jonestown happened not on American soil. Um Oh, where was Oh, it was like in South South America. It was like, it was like Guyana or something like uh, that. Okay. It's yeah. Yeah. Um it's like in a subtropic region because when they had to clean up the bodies uh, it was a fucking mess. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. Um also just like a this is not a fun fact, but it's a it's a thing. <laughs> It's a fact. Um, um, it's a fact. Uh, among the dead was uh, Thomas Nichols, the brother of the actress Nichelle Nichols, who is best known for her role as Uhura in the original Star Trek mm-hmm. television series. Yeah. I thought that was interesting because California probably. Yeah. Um, and like there was little bits of Star Trek in this religion too, which is weird. Mm-hmm. It's like a weird kind of. The, the the mashup of the Bible and, and sci-fi is just always... It's not a sketchy. good idea. Not a good idea. Pick one or the other. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the tale of Heaven's Gate and Hale Bop. It's um, so fucked up. Oh, also, I when I was, like, looking for resources to, uh, to like, research, um, 
I found a podcast of it's like a I think it's followers of Heaven's Gate that are still in existence now. Like there's still it's still an active thing. Did you listen to it? I tried. I listened to like the first five minutes and there's (laughs) one of the people on it just like is breathing heavily (laughs) into the microphone. (laughs) Oh, there. And it's like a wheezy, wheezy, deep. I can't. They're the Nicole of the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's like. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, it's goddamn. Hail Bop. When's it coming back? (laughs) You want to hitch a ride? Um, Preserve that human body. Or not, because then you can just get a new one. Oh, yeah, you get an angelic (laughs) celestial body. It's like so hot. It has like a 12 pack. (laughs) Ew. <laughs> it's hairless. Ew. <laughs> um, when is Hail Bop coming back? You're going to be flagged. So many cults are going to reach out to you right now. <laughs> Looks like it's not going to be coming back until uh, 4380. Oh, geez. Well, you missed your chance. Yeah. Oh, well. Do you think? No, I saw it in my lifetime. I'm I'm fine with yeah, it. Yeah, but you didn't join it. Do you think you're missing out? Do you think you're like? No. Do you think? Because I'm only gonna live another like sixty years or something. Do you think they're? Do you think they're up there living eternally, riding a comet through the space in their new alien bods? <laughs> through the space. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like who knows? what do you think happened to them? They're fucking dead. <laughs> I don't know, man. A, you can believe whatever. You, I listen. I hope that they're partying up on a spaceship and living their best second lives, <laughs> living their best alien lives, mm-hmm. without their balls. <laughs> <laughs> what if they got up there and they're like, the aliens like, it's the, what it's- happened to your balls? <laughs> you were they're supposed like, is- to keep those. <laughs> They're like, here's our balls in a in a preserved in a glass. They're like, this is the champagne room. No sex in the champagne room. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh my god. All right. Well, that's all I got. Well, same. Um, thanks, everyone. Don't, don't join. Don't join cults. Yeah, please guys. don't join a cult. They'll probably tell you to stop listening to our podcast, and then they're fucking losers. So, and then you can like talk to your friends and family. You can't have sex. You'll have to cut your balls off if you have any. God damn. Do- you have to wear like lame drab clothes. Yeah. You'll have to wear, you'll have to kill yourself in, in a house in San Diego that's like really sad. Mm-hmm. You'll have to eat a, a turkey pot pie for your last meal. Oh, yeah. I, that's delicious. I fucking love pot pie. It could be beef, too. turkey, chicken. I don't care. It could just be Shepherd's vegetable. Shepherd's pie? Oh, I love any. I love all pies. Even a quiche. Yeah. Quiche is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So follow us on social meds. Yep. Um, Instagram at DTFU podcast. Yeah. Twitter. Same thing. If you want to send us an email about the cult that you almost joined. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, or one that tried to recruit you or one that your family is in. Ooh, yeah. Um, uh, DTFU podcast at gmail.com. Yep. At DTFU Podcast on Facebook. All the social mm-hmm. means. We just really love and thank everyone for listening. It's so fun. I was just thinking as I was zoning out from this fucking 8% beer. No. Oh. I've only had cereal today, so it kind of hit me hard uh, because mm. I'm a child. Um, I only had a protein shake. Oh. Um, so. You were drinking all Master your meals cleanse. today. Yeah. Master cleanse. <laughs> uh i was just thinking oh this is so fun i love doing this every week it's great it's so much fun all right dude well welp everybody hope you enjoyed um sorry if it was depressing but it was like kind of a downer we'll probably edit it so it's not as sad no 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 we're gonna edit this heavily yeah we'll probably just leave it so it's mostly us laughing at herf and then like oh and then they died <laughs> yeah <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> All right, babe. I'll talk to you in a second when we stop recording. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye.